ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Tech Showdown. My name is Kevin. This is my co-host, Teddy. I'm feeling much better now, guys. It's really good. And today, I'm bringing you my first showdown that I've done in Taiwan. And it's really good to be back. I love making these videos. And it's going to be the Intel i9-9900K going up against the AMD Ryzen 7 2700X. So finally, I get to do an Intel versus AMD 8-core battle on the mainstream liner. So let's jump right into it then and talk about the CPUs themselves. So first, the Intel i9-9900K. So this is a 14 nanometer plus plus Coffee Lake CPU. So remember that. 8th gen was Coffee Lake, 9th gen is also Coffee Lake. So it's an 8 core, 16 thread CPU coming with a base clock speed of 3.6 gigahertz and a turbo clock speed or boost speed of 5 gigahertz. It's also unlocked. Now the Ryzen 7 2700X is a CPU I think a lot of you guys are familiar with. So it's a 12 nanometer Zen Plus CPU. So it is Ryzen 2, but it's Zen Plus. It's also 8 cores, 16 threads, and then clock speed wise, it's a bit slower. So it's coming with a base speed of 3.7 gigahertz and a turbo speed of 4.3 gigahertz, although as I'll talk about later, it mainly like to go up to about 4.35. It is also fully unlocked. Now, as far as my testing goes, uh, the 9900K never dipped below 4.7 gigahertz. That was sort of the uh, lowest I ever saw it go down to. And the 2700X never went below 4 gigahertz uh, for any sort of consistent time. Maybe I would see it dip for a second down to, you know, 3.95, but for the most part, it stayed above 4 gigahertz. So you can see with both of them, they stayed around 300 megahertz from their top boost speed. Now let's talk about the test rigs then, because there's been a lot of changes here and I'm gonna do a full sort of rig update video about both my AMD and Intel test rigs. So we'll start with the AMD one then. So I tested the 2700X with the Gigabyte X470 Aorus Gaming 7 motherboard. So that's a high-end X470, a very, very good motherboard, and it did a great job with the 2700X. Now the 9900K was tested with the ASRock Z390 Tai Chi Ultimate. So this is a new board. It is also fantastic, a high-end motherboard, very, very good, and I'll be doing a standalone review of that motherboard very soon. Now, as far as the memory goes, I tested them with 16 gigabytes of G-Skill memory set at 3400 megahertz for all the tests. The cooler I used was the Be Quiet Dark Rock 4, which I'm going to be doing a review of very soon also, and that's a great cooler if you're looking for something that's, uh, you're just looking for an air cooler, something that's not too excessive, but is still got a good size. And then for the GPU, I tested them with the PowerColor Red Devil Vega 56 because that's the only GPU I have available right now. Uh, that's the only one I have. And I thought it would be good as well from the aspect of this is sort of one of the best Vega 56s you can get. And its performance is probably similar to something like a 1070 Ti that's more in line with what I think a lot of you guys are running in terms of GPUs. Now, we, we usually run the best GPU we can. There's a good reason for that. It's to get the GPU out of the way as much as possible. But I think this is also good in the sense that it shows you what you're more likely to see. So if you're running something like a 1070, 1070 Ti, 1080, or like Vega 56, Vega 64, something like that. This is sort of the performance you would see if you used uh, either the 2700X or the 9900K, as we'll show when we get to the benchmarks. But before that, let's talk about the overclocking and the temperatures. 
So this was an area I was really interested in because the 27X, uh, 2700X and all Ryzen CPUs have been soldered down. That was something that we said was really, really good from AMD and they got a lot of praise for it. This is something that Intel has been, uh, that Intel did, but then they sort of took away and then they've sort of come back to now. So the 9900K is soldered, which is really, really good. That just helps bring the uh, temperatures down, which is always a nice thing to see. Now, as far as the overclocking goes, I don't know why I've had bad luck, but uh, the 2700X I had here couldn't do 4.2 gigahertz. I tried everything, but it just couldn't do it. I'm talking on all cores. Uh, it could do 4.1 gigahertz on all eight, but that required me to turn down the memory, which isn't what I wanted to do, and it actually decreased the performance, which isn't ideal. Uh, so that wasn't good. So for my benchmarks, I'm not going to show overclock results for the 2700X. I'm just going to show it at stock speeds because I couldn't get an overclock that actually uh, improved performance. And that's not just me being unfortunate. Quite a few people out there have had trouble getting any sort of meaningful uh, performance upgrade over there uh, with their 2700X. And it was sort of a similar story with the 9900K here. So this is a very high, you know, clock speed straight out of the box. You have five gigahertz, and I managed to get it up to four, uh, five point one gigahertz on all eight cores. But I couldn't get five point two, and even five point one, it felt like it was like really getting up there. The temps were certainly getting up there, as you'll see very soon. And yeah, it that's all I could get out of it. So not much wiggle room with the 9900K either. I would say for both of these CPUs, uh, they're fairly sort of maxed out, so to speak. Uh, but I did include the 9900K overclock results because they were beneficial, especially in the productivity stuff, as you could imagine. Now for the temps, I ran IDA64, the CPU stress test for five minutes. And as you guys can see, the 2700X wins big time. Even at stock speeds, the 9900K runs quite a bit hotter, but that, that was better than I thought it would be. So it's showing the solder is actually doing something because compared to the 8700K, that's actually pretty good. But once you overclock it, boy, does it get hot. It gets really, really hot. So if you're planning on getting a 9900K, I would suggest, and you're gonna overclock it, I would suggest you get some really good cooling for it because you're gonna need it, that's for sure. Now with all of that out of the way, let's jump into the benchmarks and see how these two CPUs perform.
more surprises, the 9900K wins. I mean, what did we expect to happen? It's an eight core, 16 thread CPU running at five gigahertz out of the box. It's gonna win. It has a huge clock speed advantage over the 2700X. Now, one thing I thought was interesting was that previously with like the 8700K, it would often win in the gaming benchmarks to, you know, over the 2700X, but then it would lose in productivity. That's not the case anymore. The 9900K wins across the board in productivity and in gaming. So overall, I have to say in terms of the benchmarking, uh, the 9900K wins. It just did across the board. It's a very, very powerful CPU. And in the productivity stuff, it did very good. So this would be an amazing CPU for those that are doing gaming and productivity stuff as it did very, very good in both of them. Now that being said, the 2700X still put up quite a bit of a fight and we'll talk about price and other stuff soon. So I can't really hit on it too hard. In productivity, you're seeing it, it fall a bit behind and in games it did as well. That's just mainly because of clock speed and this is an area we have talked a lot about with the Ryzen CPUs. The clock speed advantage that the Intel CPU, like the 9900K, has over the 2700X is mainly why we're seeing that discrepancy. And so with the new and upcoming Ryzen CPUs, when they come out, hopefully the clock speed gap between the AMD and Intel CPUs is closed, and then I think AMD will start really showing Intel um, some serious competition uh, in terms of the core matching. Uh, performance. With all that being said, let's get into the conclusion. And what do I make of these two CPUs? So like always, we have to bring price into it because that is a very important factor. So the 2700X is a very good deal price-wise, I must say. So right now on Newegg, you can pick it up for 305 US dollars. And I think that's a really good deal for what you're getting. Now the 9900K right now on Newegg is coming in at a whopping 580 US dollars. Now, I must say that uh, I think that's inflated right now and I think over the next month or two, you're gonna see that price come down quite a bit, probably by like $100 even. Uh, so I think that price will come down. It's just up high initially and then over the next month or two, you'll see it come down quite a bit. But obviously it's gonna be more expensive than the 2700X. Another thing you have to factor in is this does not come with a cooler. The 2700X comes with the Wraith Prism. And that is a really good stock cooler where the 9900K does not come with a cooler. So that is something else you need to keep in mind. If you're just gonna be running the 9900K say at stock speed, you're not gonna be overclocking it, then you can probably get away with just a decent 120 millimeter air cooler just fine. That would work. But if you're planning on overclocking this guy, then I would seriously think about investing in either a big boy air cooler or some liquid cooling, like a 240, 280, or even maybe bigger, because you're gonna need it as this CPU is very, very hot once you overclock it. So that's another thing you're gonna have to think about. And then there's the motherboard cost as well. So most people running a 2700X, I would imagine would be trending towards the X470 line. And uh, the, the price wise will also be better there. So what does this mean overall? It means that when you go to build your PC or go to upgrade your PC, it's not just the price of the CPU you need to consider, it's all the other things. Does it require a cooler? You know, which motherboard can I get? How much are the motherboards, et cetera, et cetera. And when you consider all those things, I would say overall, you would probably be seeing that the 2700X would be half as much as the 9900K, at least for the next month or two. Maybe prices will come down over, you know, over the next few months, but as of right now, that's what I would say overall. Once you factor in coolers and everything else, it would probably cost twice as much uh, to go down the 9900K route as it would to go for the 2700X. Which leads to which one should you buy? 
And I think for this, you just need to ask yourself this question. What do I value more? What, what's more important to me? Value for money or outright performance? So if you're a money conscious person or, or anything like that, or if you're quite you know well off or you, your money's not an issue, you're living very comfortably, then you're gonna obviously take that question differently. So I'll put it this way. If value for money is the more important thing to you, then 100% go for the 2700X. Yes, it doesn't have the performance of the 9900K, but you're gonna save a ton of money by comparison. However, if money's not really as much of an issue for you and you just want the best performance, both in gaming and in productivity of, on the mainstream lineup, then you would simply go for the 9900K. Yes, it'll cost maybe around twice as much as the 2700X, but it will give you a decent performance uptick over the 2700X, both in gaming and productivity. And that's basically how I have to leave this video. So I thank you guys for watching it. And I want to know in the comment section down below, uh, what do you think of the 9900K? I mean, we've been talking about it for months now. Uh, is it everything you thought it would be? Are you disappointed? Are you kind of blown away maybe by how good the performance is? I really want to know what you guys think. I want this to be a conversation. I'm going to be looking through all the comments and replying to as many as I can. So I want to know what you guys think down below. Now, I thank you all for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I tried very hard on it and I hope you guys noticed that. Uh, if you want to support the channel, I've added channel memberships now, so you can click the join button and do that, and that will help support me. Any money I make from it will be put back into the channel in terms of making everything look better, doing more showdowns and that. So if you want to support me, uh, that's the best way you can do it. And I thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you guys next time.